Yo, welcome everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful ladder reset weekend. Now we're just 48 hours after the ladder started and I already have a paladin that looks like this one right here. You can tell some of the gear pieces I have on already. It's a ton of great end game gear. Now, how exactly did I get this stuff so quick? Let's go ahead and take a look exactly what I got, how my character is built and how I came to obtain these pieces of gear. So first of all, you just need just enough strength to go ahead and wear your gear. Here, I got 100 base points into it. It might vary for you. So if you're going to build this, you might be, do it a little bit differently. Now for dexterity, right now I only got 90 hard points. All the rest are going to go in here to get me closer and closer to max block. I'm not sure if I ended up doing the math right because I don't have literally 100% perfect gear yet. We'll have to see if I have to use another one of those Den of Evil respects. But right now I have 90 hard points. And then after I use Holy Shield, it gets me a much higher block chance. So we'll, we'll see how that ends up panning out when I get higher level. I'm also only level 86 at the moment. Now I have 300 hard points here into vitality, nothing extra into energy. You can see my, where my resistances fall all really good. And once I get a few more better pieces of gear, they will all be capped out without too much struggle. Hopping over to the skill tree now, obviously it's a Fist of the Heavens Paladin. So we max out Fist of the Heavens. You need to put all the one point into the stuff to go ahead and get down to it. And of course, Holy Bolt right here as well. That is another skill that you go ahead and use and you get a ton of damage from this. This really, these bolts right here do more than the ones here from the Holy Bolt, but when there's large packs, you drop these down and you could rain them from all across the map. So it really has a ton of safety, way more safety than using hammers. Now then of course you want the survivability from Holy Shield. We went ahead and maxed that out as well. And notice down at the bottom, it has a defiance synergy. Go ahead and note that. Now, no matter what, you gotta have one point into smite anyways, but I kind of do a little bit of stuff here and have some gear pieces to make this a Fist of the Heavens slash Smiter. So we'll take a look at that as we march through the rest of the skill tree and the gear. Now hopping over to Offensive Auras, and this is one of the little tricks I said, go ahead and put one point into Fanaticism. When you get more and more and more plus skills, you can get this up right now. It's at nine with only one base point into it, but you get a bunch of attack damage, you get a bunch of attack speed. The higher it gets, the more you get, obviously. And this is what we're going to go ahead and have on when we want to use Smite, whether we're going after D-Clone or perhaps even going after Torches. Now, this isn't an absolute perfect Torch Farmer by any means, but with some of the gear and this stuff, you can definitely go out and do it. And you could easily go ahead and go after D-Clone with just Smite, the one in the one point, and then having the right piece of gear to go along with it. Over on the defensives. Now, Salvation is great for your entire party, especially early on. I, put, I decided to put one point into it. Why not help you out? Get your resistances capped get your party's resistances capped. Not long ago, I did not have this much uh, resistance on my character, so I was using Salvation quite a bit. And plus, it just helps your party if they're not dying all the time because they have no res, you can actually clear stuff faster. Getting down to Redemption one point into this, I think is absolutely amazing and kind of a must. I don't feel you need any more points into that with the plus skills you end up getting already. I have nine. And uh, so just one point there is perfectly fine. Now here's where I said, remember Defiance is a synergy of Holy Shield. So I went ahead and maxed out Defiance, 20 hard points, so that it goes ahead and gives you 15% defense per level. So it gets your defense super high. If the monsters have almost no chance of hitting you, on top of that, you have a really super high chance to block, you're pretty much not gonna be getting touched at all. I didn't feel that I really need to do more on the dual specking for the smiting and stuff type of uh, situation type side of it. So this is the way I decided to go. There's 13, 14 different ways to dual spec a, a Fist of the Heavens Paladin. Who knows, could be more. But you can do it any way you want to. This is the way I decided to go. Now looking at the gear, I actually had a very interesting thing. I went ahead and made a rune word while I was recording and then my software messed up and there's no recording. So I just made this rune word and I barely even touched it to use it. But I had a spirit sword before, obviously. I found a four socketed spirit sword on the playthrough, went and threw it together. And I was using that kind of a go-to for casters, but now I've got myself a Heart of the Oak. Now, the Korun, I went ahead and found the Four Socketed Flail. Uh, I don't remember where I got that from. The Vex Rune, I actually found a Cold Sunder Charm, an 89 resistance Cold Sunder Charm. Now, that's a really bad one. Even for that, Cold Sunder Charms are so expensive, I got a Vex Rune for it. And I actually got a funny story about Cold Sunder Charms, which we'll talk about on the next piece of gear, but it rolled 34 resistance, not great, not the worst possible, right? Kind of pretty much middle of the road, but I'm happy to get a Heart of the Elk. This is essentially end game right here for the Fist of Heavens Paladin. Obviously a perfect one would be better, but that's about it. Talking about Cold Sunder Charms, up here I have a Shaco. 
And actually, earlier on when I was running Terrorize and Dario, I found a cold Sunday from like a, a zombie or something on the way down. I don't remember exactly, but it was somewhere around 83 res. And I actually got this morning an Ohm rune for that. So an Ohm rune I got for one cold Sunday, and then like five hours later, I got a Vex rune for one, and that was the most I could get. So that's how much the price drops. And there is going to be price fluctuation based upon the time of day, because if there's more people selling, it's going to drive the price down. And if there's less people selling, the price will go up. So I think maybe this morning there was less people playing. I'm kind of an early riser kind of person, so it could have been the case. But anyways, so I got an Ohm rune for that cold Sunday. I traded that for this Shaco and some other stuff. I believe that pull rune was kind of in there as well. That was for the Heart of the Oak. So that's how I ended up getting these pieces. A couple of lucky drops on some cold Sunder charms. Now jumping over here, I none of this gear I was given to me. I found all this stuff or traded for it with the exception of this one piece right here. Uh, my boy G Stacks, he's one of my uh, longtime channel members. He's a mod, great dude. He ended up giving this to me, and this is actually a great one to get. If it had two skills, it'd be even better, but it's almost a caster amulet. So until you get a 210 or 220 Paladin caster amulet, this is a great option. Thanks, G Stacks. Now jumping over to the shield, this was a 31 base spirit that somebody on my party while we're playing through found, and uh, it had no sockets in it. I didn't know it's a super low base heraldic shield, but had 31 res. I said, you know what? This is going to be our first uh, pally spirit. So I went ahead and Larzic'd it. And then I went ahead and threw the spirit runes in it, which you're watching right now. And bam, baby, 35 FCR. But hey, don't just stop looking there. Look down a little further. 112 mana. That's a perfect roll as well. 35 is the max on FCR. 112 is the max on the mana. And then look down at the magic absorb. I think it rolls two to eight or four to eight. I can't remember which one, maybe three to eight, but I got six, which is a good roll on the magic absorb. I guess it's not that important, but it's so close to a perfect roll on a spirit shield. So absolutely crazy. My rune luck, my rune word luck, I should say, has been great coming into this ladder. Now on the armor, I'm still rocking this stealth. You make them super early on and you use them all the rest of the game until you get something way better. I'm thinking about maybe a Viper Magi, but I don't need any more FCR. My res is pretty dang high. I might throw on a Scolders here, to be perfectly honest, just to get a bunch more magic trying to help me out that way. Uh, I could go ahead and uh, pull a smoke on here. I do have one, but I'm utilizing it in a different position, which you could probably guess. And then we'll go ahead and take a look over the gloves. These chance guards, I actually found these on the playthrough as well. It might have even been like normal Durial or somewhere along. Like we found them super early. So I've had these forever. Down in the rings, we have this is what I've been using for a while too. just some resistances. I need to get better rings. So this is the best I found so far, I guess. This is the best I found so far, I guess. Another FCR ring over here. Hopefully getting some SOJs for there soon, I suppose. Here we got a great boot for this. Alders Advanced now. 50 uh, to life, 40 walk run, great. But the big thing, that fire resistance. They rolled anti-perfect on that particular stat. 40 to 50 is what they roll. But that fire res makes up for what you generally don't get on the spirit. This base has 31 all res, which is why there's 31 fire res. But the Spirit Rune Word doesn't come with any Fire Res. So you make that up right here on your Alders Advanced. Over on the belt here, this was an amazing craft too. I only did one caster belt. We hit it, uh, rolls between 5 and 10 FCR. I got 8, cool. 24 hit recovery. Nice. On top of that, you get Lightning and Fire Res. Boom. That was an awesome roll. They always come with some of that FCR and Mana and Mana Regen. So getting Lightning and Fire Res on there along with that hit recovery for just one. I didn't do a bunch, just did one. Bam, hit it, got lucky. That was amazing. Now on Swap, you got to get yourself a Tele Staff early on. That way you can at least get yourself into the Cat Sanctuary. Jump walls, get yourself out of safety. Make sure you shop one of these before you get Enigma. Or, you know, you might never get Enigma, but you got to get yourself at least a Tele Staff. Open down at the Charms, just whatever I have down here that could help me out, whatever I found along the way. Here, just a little bit of life, a little bit of res, a little bit of hit recovery. This is just all I found. I'm going to get a Torch and Annie as soon as I can get my hands on them. And a Geed's Grand Charm, of course. Haven't got that far yet. And then the Mercenary gear, of course, because we're Fists of the Heavens, you could go ahead and I would almost recommend, depending on what you find, Act 1 Mercenary is a great option because you can make insights and bows now. You can get your Meditation Aura that way. But I actually found some stuff that I decided to go with the Act 2 Mercenary just out of luck, really. So... I'm going with the Holy Freeze version, even though some of the bodies shatter, you can't redeem them. The survivability from the Cold Aura, I decided to go with. Keep him alive and me a little bit. Now, this is the luck I was talking about. I found a giant Thresher, right? It was just white. I didn't Larzic it because if you Larzic it, you'll get six sockets. It's not like the Colossus Fulge. So I went ahead, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and throw the runes in there. Ral, Am, Amethyst, Cubit, and you'll get 
between one and six sockets that it'll roll to. So you only have a one in six chance of getting four sockets. As you can guess by the fact that you're looking at insight right now, I rolled it one time, bam, got four sockets, slammed an insight in it. But wait, there's more. Go ahead and look at the meditation aura. 17 meditation right there, bam. Got a 211 roll on the damage. I don't know what they roll on the enhanced damage there, so I don't know how great that is. Uh, it does have six crit down there too. I don't know how that one rolls as well, but 17 med is what everyone looks for. That's the max you can get there, I believe. So I'm happy about that roll. The, the rune word luck has been crazy, fellas. But wait, rune word luck we're talking about. There's even more. I decided to go ahead and make myself a bulwark. I did have a blood helm. Look at this roll, fellas. And once again, I just made one and this is what happened. Six life leech. That's the most you can get right there. The 93 to defense, not the hugest thing in the world. Who cares? But it rolls 70 to 100. 93 is pretty dang good. But look down at the bottom. Physical damage reduced 15%. It rolls between 10 and 15, fellas. So a perfect roll on the physical damage reduced. So great life leech damage reduced. This rune would luck's been crazy. Now we're looking at what I said I was utilizing before. I have the smoke over here to cap out his resistances. They're at 53. So throw this on there. They're capped out no problem along with some hit recovery. I could throw this or make another one, throw it on my character. It is an option. I do got to figure out my armor slot, but over here on the mercenary, he survives a lot of the time. There is sometimes he gets in the trouble. This isn't the best possible gear in the world, but this is working out pretty darn good for me. So a great place to run this is the pits, as you see right there, because everything in here is undead and demons. Go ahead and put our holy shield on and we'll show you how this works. I'm lazy, so I'm just going to leave redemption on here. That way you don't have to keep swapping around. I don't like all the actions per minute. I'm just going to show you 30 seconds to a minute of it wrecking down here. So I'm just in a game by myself down in the pits. But yeah, this thing works really great. And to be honest, even if you don't have the Heart of the Oak or the Shaco, this thing still works really great down here. It really does. That's really all you're getting. Instead of having like a lore and a spirit, it's only like two skills is the only difference really. And obviously some resistances, I suppose, but it's not the biggest thing in the world. You're still going to do great even if you just got that spirit rune word and the lore as well. So you can kind of see how great this is. Well, we got another champion right here. We'll take them out and uh, we'll go ahead and move to the cast sanctuary. And here we are in. We'll go ahead and utilize our telly staff to go ahead and get ourselves right inside the door. No problem. And there we are. And go ahead and start taking out the cast sanctuary. These are probably the two most common, the best places. You can obviously go out to Trav. They are going to be demons as well if you're rocking the same exact build. And Pindle is also another good option. Obviously, they're all undead as well. So these guys right here, Venom Lords, they got the most health. We'll go ahead and rip them down super quick. And you did notice I am utilizing charge as well. I didn't mention that on the skill tree, but it's one you have to put points into anyways to get to where you're going on the skill tree. And since we don't have an Enigma to teleport around all the time, it really is a great option. It's probably one of the most underrated, I would say, for the budget paladin anyways. I really, when I'm moving around the cast sanctuary, I was in here with like an average sorceress, I guess, when we were doing cast runs earlier, and I was keeping right up with them moving around the map. And that's straight up, that's not hyperbole, I'm not just saying that. I legitimately was going around at the exact same speed as a teleporting sorceress. So if you ain't got to go through walls, you might as well use the charge ability. So you can go ahead and see how the cast sanctuary goes. I'm just going to show you from here on out just the seal bosses and then Diablo himself, unless something good drops, of course. So here's this uh, group right here, Grand Vizier of Chaos. Just hit him a couple times with those holy bolts. Down he goes. Let's move on to Lord DeSace. All right, we're hitting here. Moving on to the Lord DeSace group that just ripped my mercenary instantly. Extra fast fanaticize and they drop right on his head. Almost me too. I wasn't sure where they were dropping. I'm going to be honest. Maybe a little bit of a skill, skill issue on my part. But Lord says down. We'll go ahead and move on to uh, Infector. So pop these seals and we got him coming out. And I'll just go ahead and rock this without the the, the mercenary, I guess. Your, your mana kind of ends up fine anyways with redemption up all the time. If you're not going to use redemption, I can understand definitely having that mana regen from the insight. Uh, pretty much mandatory if you don't have redemption on. You could be swapping back and forth constantly. That's what a lot of people do, of course. But as I said before, I'm a lazy man and I like to just go ahead and not have to swap around all the time. And now we'll go after Diablo. The mercenary does require babysitting against Diablo as well. So let's go ahead and see how fast that one gets taken out. And here we go. So you pretty much just stand still until he goes ahead and shoots you with uh, one of these skills like that. You've seen how much of that was taking you down. I stood in it for a second just to kind of show you. Now that fire one you also want to get rid of because that will rip you and your mercenary to be perfectly honest. So 
There we go. Down goes Diablo. And that is my first 48 hours Fist of the Heavens Paladin. If you liked the video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe up. If you are brand new, peace out and keep slaying.